Ooh, yeah! Welcome to the show. I'm your host, uh, Big, Big Daddy, Daddy, Daddy Buds, and my co host, The Alfred. And Alfred Corleone, and you yeah. stumbled upon the, the Road to the Spares, the last Mexican. edition. What? <laughs> it's the old Mexican series. Oh, yeah! Let's see here. Harvesting five plants yeah, on yeah. boxing and a DeLorean in Alaska? Facts, and my mom said what? Yeah, and your mom said. What? Yeah, listen, my mom said something to me last week that, that that is bugging my mind, and I need to bring it up to you guys okay. to see if I'm the one that's crazy. Don't be interesting, I'm sure. It's a fact, but let's get to the video, though. Starting downstairs in my cousin's garage, where I'm currently running 11 different plants, 10 different cultivars or strains. The organic side to the left has five going, but those are the ones that we will be chopping down today. So before we get to that part, let's focus on the ones that are being ran synthetically. On screen, I'll be flashing the plant's name along with where they came from for your information. While that's going on, I wanted to answer a question that's been asked a few times, and that is, what do I mean when I say organic and synthetic? The easiest way for me to understand it is that organic is carbon-based nutrient, meaning it's derived from live things like animals. So you'd be top dressing your plants with things like cow manure or fish bone, and the microbes in your soil would then break that down into the elements that the plant needs. Synthetic nutrients are salt-based nutrients that are already in the form that the plant can consume. Organic fertilizers break down to the same exact elements that synthetic fertilizers provide. So chemically, there's no difference at all. They, they aren't taken up by the plants until they're degraded to the element. Feeding organically is more of a guessing game. Since you are working with living things, what's available to the plant at any one point is hard to gauge, whereas synthetic, every time you feed, you know exactly what you're putting in that. And you know that it is all available for your plant to consume at that moment. <laughs> yeah, that's the Cairo outfit. Look at that. Oh, she can get it. That's a fact outfit. She's so matter of fact, that, that's the cover right there. Oh, that has to be the cover outfit. Yeah. Hey, yo, shout out. She a star. She a star. Yo, Alfred, the other day, man, I was feeling down because of money, because of money. Mm -hmm. And then I got to thinking, man, I get to be the dude that gets to see this, bro, every time. You know what I'm talking about? It's unclear, but proceed. Like, I get to be the guy that makes these videos. Right. Like, you ever seen somebody do something amazing, you're like, man, I wonder what it'd be like to have that much talent. Like, maybe that's what that's what my payment is. I get to know. <laughs> you a clown! You a whole clown! Bro, bro, listen, I get to be this guy, bro. Come Stop. on. It ha listen. You're so vain. No, that's not you it. You probably think this is so <laughs> Back up, man. <laughs> Anyway, the equipment I've been using for this setup has been flashing on screen. Both of these tents are oversized 2x4 spaces. On the synthetic side, we got two LED fixtures going. Both of them at 90% power. power. On the organic, we got the G4500, and that's being ran at 85% power. 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 All of the equipment you've been seeing is from our sponsors, Spider Pharma. Oh, uh, and discount code ALFRED should save you a little bit of money at checkout. Should you be interested in any of this? Hey, so what's going on? Uh oh, that's the thing with my mom. That's what we're gonna talk about in a little bit, bro. Better watch your mouth when you talk about my baby mom. Man, mm, sh shut up. <laughs> shut up, Alfie. I knew, I knew that was coming. I knew it was coming. You're so abusive. <laughs> These plants are huge, between four and five feet tall. And all of them are in three-gallon plastic pots, which in my opinion is just too small. That's what she said. For organics. It just doesn't give you enough media to top dress all of the nutrition that the plant needs. So for next run, I am planning to bump it back up to five or seven-gallon pots. As we move on. Oh, to the first plant that we're gonna be taking out today, and that is the Chimera Junkie from Hyrule Genetics. Yeah. Second time running this plant for this channel, the first time was in the very last season, and it for sure was one of the frostiest ones we had going. This mixes the Cap Junkie with the Chimera number three, which we actually will be cutting down today as well. Are you fan? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen, we got everything here. We got everything for you, Doc. On screen, a flashback of the first time we ran it, and this was ran synthetically the first time. So as you can see, the frost level on this is ridiculous, but the size of the nugs are leaving a lot to be desired. So why you run it again, then? Well, I take clones of everything, and then after I smoke it, I decide if I'm going to keep it or not. And in this case, the smoke of this, the frost, and the smell made it interesting enough for me to try it again. But in order to have something to compare and contrast this time around, we went ahead and ran it organically. Well, 
yeah. right into my surprise, we did get a different looking structure, at least from what we're able to observe right now. Size-wise, overall bigger nugs than last time we ran it. However, unable to tell yet about the density. We'll have a better idea of this when we start trimming it. As far as the frost, I'd say that it's a little bit less than last time around. And while none of this is science, I did keep a nug sample from each one of the plants that we ran last season. Just so we could actually look at these things side by side and see if we pick up on anything extra. You're so thoughtful. I try, I try, Alfred. So be looking for that content on future episodes in this channel, yeah. Yeah, see? See, I don't know if the, the, the density is going to match up to the last one, but we'll see. By the way, if you're new here and haven't uh, followed along, this is all been cut down at week number 10 of flower. The original plan was to cut the organic side at week number 9 of flower and then the synthetic at week number 10. However, when I took these plants out last week, the bottom nugs were just far too underdeveloped for my taste. Which is why I decided to wait another week before I cut them down and which is why this video is also a week later. As we move on <laughs> to our next plant, the truck. Aloha number two, S1, a JB's cut. Oh, baby. This is the first time run for this channel, so we have nothing to compare it to. We do, however, have the information on the lineage. The original Truffaloha number 2 S1 comes from Belize. And this is a keeper cut from J Dirt Exotics that he gifted to me when I moved to Alaska. As far as the nose for this one, JD gets grapes with a background hint of coconut. While recording for this video, my cousin also noted to him it smelled like cereal. Even my cousin said it like cereal. Like, like a cereal. Like cereal, he said. Look at that. Gonflet. Gonflet, my boy. <laughs> Man, yeah, follow me there on Instagram. Every time I record videos here for YouTube, I post up some behind the scenes stuff. Very silly, very silly. Now, since I don't got nothing else to say about this plan, I mean, <laughs> look at Let it. Let me set up the mom story while you observe its beauty. Now, as most of you know, we couldn't come to a monetary agreement with current sponsors of the channel, Spider Farmer. <laughs> So at the end of this season, our collaboration with them would be over, and I would be a free agent. Yeah. So this is what Spider Farmer said to me. Row, row. Oh, that's fucked no, up! No, no, listen, 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 take it listen, back. dog. Take it back. Fine, fine, I take it back. They said until I get a new sponsor, we could continue working together past our expiration date, and they'll keep paying me the same amount that they've been paying. So they'll be paying you what you don't want to get paid, but now without a contract? Exactly. Ain't that <laughs> we'll continue that in a second. Let me get to this unboxing. My second favorite can of YouTuber, How We Grow. Go check out my 15 favorite can of YouTubers video to see which one's number one. Mine's is Mr. Canuck! You're so close to being fired, Alfred. Like, you, you're Alfred. so close, though. Anyway, he hit me up and said that he had acquired a few cuts of the dipping you're sticks. Jealous. And if I wanted to have one in my garden, I said, oh, baby. Now, this wasn't an easy decision, as I'm not running anybody else's cultivars but my own on next season. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, me promoting breeders for free is done, bro. That's done. However, I couldn't say no to my number two favorite can of YouTube. I just couldn't do that to myself. And he's a Patreon. What? I'd be wrong, you know what I'm saying? Let's move on <laughs> to the Grandpa's Cookies R2V1 from Ethos. See that free promo right there? Stop! Th that's not worth nothing stop, to you? Stop! Me saying stop, I did this. I'm showing the plan. No, I'm showing the plan. I'm sorry. I'm showing the plan for like months. Shut up. Shut up. Piece of shit. You, you guys, I'm so sorry. He's usually not like this. He's a very nice guy. Back up. Don't speak for me, Alfred. I said what I Don't said. Don't listen to him. He's just stressed about my Bro, not one repost, bro. Not one repost. Listen, matter of fact, I already talked about this plan. Let me talk about my mom real quick. So I tell my mom that these people are trying to pay me the same amount of money that I signed up for a year ago, even though my channel has doubled in size and views. And you know what my mom said to me, Alfred? Yeah, you've been talking about it all week. Come on, for the show. Uh oh. She said to me that I should maybe spend less time making these videos, put less effort into them. Okay, and what's your objection to that? What's my objection to doing shitty work? Yeah, I mean, if they're gonna pay you less, do less. Y'all clapping? Y'all really gonna clap for that? Stop the clap. What the hell is wrong with y'all? Uh-oh. Are you telling me that people are working over there doing shitty work because they're getting paid less? Got tense. Are you telling me that you're spending your life doing something shitty because someone else is not paying you enough? You're doing that to yourself? Is that what you're telling me? Is that what people are doing out there? Man, get the f*** out of here with that bullshit. I'm trying to be the best at that shit. Every video I do is going to be the best I could do. Get out of here. I don't give a fuck who's paying me or not. I'm 
I'm the fucking best. All right, Khaled. And if I mean that, then I got to show that with my work every single time, man. I don't care. Don't do that to yourself, dog. Don't do some shitty work because someone ain't giving you what you think you deserve. That's still your name on that shit, bro. Do it for you. Learn how to be the best for you, dog. Yeah, yeah. Imagine archaeologists finding shitty ass pyramids because Egyptians just weren't paid enough. Or aliens! Get out of here. When AR starts digging these internets, they're gonna find my pyramids, dog. That's my name on it. Stop it. Sponsored by Spider Farm! Shut up, Alfred. Just trying to help out. But great point, though, Alfred, because whoever sponsors me gets to be part of the best. As we move on to the Cairo by belief. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Feeling it today, baby. Out of all the plants that you will see here today, this is the longest running cultivar that we have in this channel. Been running this for about two years. And in this current run, we have two different versions of it going. We got this one, which is the one being ran organically, and the one that we showed towards the start of the video in the tent on the synthetic side. This one matches the platinum punch number 13 from in-house genetics. Picture there on the left-hand side. Apparently it was a $10,000 cut at one point. Oh, damn! And mixes that with the white truffle from Belief. On screen, you're watching some footage from when we ran this the very last season. Pretty much identical when it comes to the structure to what we're running this time around. The only difference I would say is that last season we got a little bit more size. But this time we do have a little bit more branching. On the nose, not one of my favorites. Very faint honey tone. And that's only when it's cured in the jar. While growing, I don't get anything past that weed smell. But the reason we've kept this cut so long is because of its beauty. And me wanting to mix it with my prized phenol. Of orange and that is something that we've already accomplished. We're gonna be running that next season. Yeah! It's war out here, baby. It's war. <laughs> Anyway, we've been talking about this plant for the last two years, and we're gonna be cutting down its sister on next week's episode. No, I can't wait! So given that, let's move on to our next plant, the Chimera number three from Belief as well. And man, this was one of the biggest surprises for me in this run, because look at that. Oh, she did! Yeah, yeah, this plant has just about everything going for it right here. This plant is triked out, has size, denseness, and on top of that, the nose is super sweet on it. But I don't want to lead you astray because we have ran this cultivar one more time in this channel and didn't have the same result. That's right, if you've been with us for a while, then you remember on season number eight when we tried to run this, the plant ended up herming out on us and it was so bad that we ended up calling it the, the hermiest herm, herm ever, 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 ever. For those unaware, herm traits in plants are undesirable because it means your plant has both the male and female reproductive system. So if you have pollen flying around in your grow room from one of these herm plants, you will end up pollinating the rest of your crop and instead of getting that sesamia nut we used to smoke, and you're gonna get a bunch of seeds. Oh, but I want seeds! That also have the same herm traits as his parents. Uh, oh, no, no, I don't want that, though. Of course you don't, Alfred. But this time around, the plant didn't do that, man. It gave us its full beauty. And at a price range of $200 to $400 Damn. for 10 seeds, meaning that's about $40 a seed if you get a pack of 10. I was pretty upset the first time I ran it. But this time, the plant said, nah, I got you. As far as the lineage, just like the Cairo, this starts off mixing the white truffle. But while the Cairo was mixed with the Platinum Punch 13, this was mixed with the creature. The outcome of that was then self to itself. And now we got the Chimera number 3S1. Yeah, anyway, so I didn't clone this plant first because I was planning to run my own genetics next run. And secondly, I just didn't know if it was going to be any good after the last experience. But after I saw what came out of it, when I cut it down, I took one of the least developed nugs that it had and set it up in a rapid route in order to re-veg it. And it did work, or at least it seems to be working thus far. So I'll keep the clone going until I smoke the plant and see how good it really is. And given that it has a lot of other positive qualities, perhaps going forward, we could also breed with it. But we'll see. Now, before I get to how I hang these plants and what that looks like and the footage of the DeLorean that I saw here in Anchorage. Yeah! Wanted to take a second to give a thanks to the Patreon to this page. If you're unaware, because I do cannabis content, platforms like this don't allow me to monetize these videos. Uh! That's where you come in. In Patreon, you could donate three, five, twenty dollars monthly to creators such as myself so we could continue doing the work that you so enjoy. This week, we got three new names to add to the Wall of Fame. A Minnesota Grow Bros! Yeah! <laughs> And from Miami Dade County, I don't know if that's true, but we got Jimbo Slice! Yeah! yeah. Got you though. Also, new addition to the wall, Panda Smoke 420! Yeah. What up, dog? Yeah. Now, there was one more person that tried to join the Patreon, but guess what? You can't buy me, dog. You disrespect me, you don't deserve to be on here. You get blocked. Here we go. Get out of here! 
of here, dog. Get out of he here, just dog. Don't stop. Uh -huh. Everybody else, man, I appreciate y'all so much, we man. Love Thank you. you. If you love what I do and are broke like me, you don't have to donate money to be of service to my channel. Sharing this video is the best thing that you could do to help me out. And also making sure you have your notification bell turned on so you're aware of every time I drop one of these gems. I ain't never seen no DeLorean in real life. <laughs> It's for the Instagram people. Look at that. Look at that, bro. That's they got a whole DeLorean here in Alaska. And it's a historic vehicle. You can't even you can't even mess with it though. We're about to go back to the future. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Yeah, now as far as how I dry my plant, we ran over this at the end of every season. But basically, I try to aim to maintain a 60% relative humidity in the space that I'm drying these plants at. As well as try to maintain the temperature as cool as possible. 60 Fahrenheit would be optimal for me. But given that it's summer, I just go for the coolest that I could get. It. A rotating fan in the bottom of the tent, not hitting any of the plants directly to prevent over drying, is maintaining air circulation. And in this setup, for me, these plants are usually ready in about 10 to 14 days. We'll go over how I jar these in future episodes for now. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. We'll see you